Hello guys, here is Level Up with amazing guest Michal Kuz today. Session 18. Session 18. <laughs> there are only two of us in Level Up team because Wojtek couldn't be with us uh, today, but maybe he will join the second hour. So there's me, Darius Zabrowski and Jonas Dero. Hey man. Hey, hello. I think I maybe I will introduce the Michal at very uh, first. Hello guys. Uh, <clears throat> okay, let, let's just go to the michalkus.cghub.com and you can see a lot of amazing rendering stuff that he is doing. He's working for such a projects like companies in EA Games and Criterion right now. He got a lot of amazing stuff with uh, rendering the things. Oh, and I haven't seen that Skyrim one. Is that a recent one? Yeah, he made it uh, nice. when we were hanging. Yeah, it's really last, last time. Yeah. yeah, look at this. There's a lot of details in his works. He's just, you know, just a crazy guy. Yeah, his stuff is really nice. And um, the nice thing about Mikael, like when, when we first met and looked at his work, is he paints almost everything. So that you might think that you're looking at a 3D render, but actually you're looking at a painting. So his rendering skills are pretty insane. And yeah. he's going to do a nice demo for us today. Um, Starting with line drawing, am I right, Mikael? Yeah, man, thanks. Yeah, it will be so, uh, line drawing. Yeah, I think um, it's a good core skill to have, and it's something that you don't see a lot uh, often these days. But, yeah. Um, yeah, I really stuck to it, and I'm still using that technique very often to uh, yeah, push out my designs in an uh, effective, detailed way, I guess. It's, uh, yeah. Yeah, so... Um, we will jump to you, and then you can just show us how you work, and we'll talk a little bit. Um, I'm going to yeah, take cool, over from Wojtek in terms yeah, of posting, yeah. so I might not be overpainting straight away, um, but so I, I will try to try to. Yeah, I think we will be switching from time to time to do some overpaints, and we pick the questions for Michal from the chat on YouTube. So don't hesitate to post your questions to Michal. And we will pick That's them right. and ask them to the Michal. And he'll, he will start with his demo right now. So I think maybe we should uh, share the screen of Michal. Mm -hmm. yep. And Michal, let's, you know, just the voice is yours right now. All right, man. Thanks, guys. And thanks for having me, of course. It's uh, really excited, really cool. And uh, yeah, let's try to have some fun. Um, I'll try to do a. Um, um, industrial design piece because that's really actually my background and I'm going to design like um, a, like a detailed version of the speed paint direct data a while ago we were like hanging out for fun and I said you know one time I would like to make like a better looking design of this one because it has uh, has some interesting shapes I like the rotors the engines uh, it looks very Diesel punkyish, um, junky artish. Uh, so it's quite interesting, yeah. And the name is fun, you know, baby who? It's, uh, it's half English, half Polish. So you can you can Google translate it. And see yeah, some of it some of already know it. <laughs> um, so Mikael, what what uh, image size are you working in? Because I just want to make sure that you uh, don't get kicked while you're doing your demo. So my image size right now is uh, well, let's see. Um, so if it's did I just see eight thousand? <laughs> and yeah, it might be like that. If, uh, let, let, let me yeah, that's sure. probably not going to end very well. <laughs> I found that it's best with Google Hangout to stay under two thousand pixels. All right, it's uh, five thousand wide. Yeah, you need to make that smaller, man, because you're almost All definitely. Right. Yeah, because it's some possibility that it will drop you off if yeah. you right. have a well, bigger no worries, size. No worries, guys. And so, uh, Mikael, just keep your Facebook open. So if you get kicked and you don't notice it, I'll just send you a message there. Oh, yeah, cool. Re-enter. But if it's suddenly really quiet, then... You know. yeah. That's the annoying thing about Google Hangout is that you always get kicked when you're not looking at the Hangout screen, so you never know when you get kicked. And there's no sound or anything telling you that you got kicked. There's only sound when you enter the Hangout, but not when you yeah. leave. It, it, used to, it used to be, but for now, it's, there is not no yeah, sound of it. All right, so let's just... Um... Just a percentage here. Let's do like. Yeah, it should be 
fine. So uh, what you see here is like I already have like a perspective grid. It's a very old one actually before I even started using uh, 3D. But I still work like that. Um, I used this perspective grid for a lot of my designs, and um, it's a good way to establish your uh, drawing in uh, in 3D. Um, and it might be it might be anything a character a landscape um, a piece of hardware it doesn't really matter I mean design is design and uh, yeah I try to uh, stay focused as a designer and to see all shapes as one in order to be as versatile as possible you know it's uh, it's very handy in the industry to accept and to develop like on all fields I think and um, yeah of course I'll be never good as uh, some guys are on characters only vehicles, but it's really cool to explore a little bit of everything. So, uh, so this setup that you're using right now is this? This is more like a production work type of. Yeah, setup it is really right? like design first, you know. I'm like exploring yeah. now with a very rough sketch where I'm going with this. Um, right now, I really don't know what I'm doing. I have like reference here from, of course, from Darek. I have some uh, World War Two. Um, uh, jets. It's like actually it's like the first one, and I have like here like um, technical elements, very industrial, which is which are helping me right now because I'm like drawing. So you are merging ideas right now, right? Sorry, yeah, yeah, kind of like that, yeah. So. Uh, and so there's some brush questions again. So for just like your line drawing, do you use any special brush, or are you just working with basic uh, rounder? Um, I usually use the the chalk brush, which I'm using now for lines, <laughs> and then I yeah, I render it the same way. I, I have some fancy brushes you can hear, you can see them yes. here, but uh, yeah, I use them like not that often, you know, because yeah. I like the whole control, and Photoshop comes with a nice set of brushes which gives you like nice control. So yeah. Yeah, I think special brushes are more for speed painters and stuff because you can emulate something quickly. Yeah. But in the end, you can you can render everything with one or two brushes. You don't. Actually yeah, that's true. Yeah, and uh, yeah. Just takes a bit more time, a bit more yeah. patience. Yeah. But the look is different as well. Exactly. Yeah. Well, let's see where this one is going. And so, if you were work, let's say that you were doing this image for a for a company, would you yeah. stick to this um, quarter view, or would you also do like orthographic? Uh, well, it really depends. Sometimes they like want like um, a re really, really detailed design, you know. Uh, so I'll be doing like front, front, uh, top, uh, everything, you know. Um, but let's stay for now very simple. I'll just make uh, a line sketch very fast, and uh, let's see how we can um, develop it on a higher level, you know, on a higher. And maybe if we have time left, we can like render it as well. Mm -hmm. So. Okay, I'm gonna yeah. look at the questions. Of course. Derek, is that a bra hanging on your closet? Uh, Silence. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> no, no, no. Just okay, but you had to check, so it it was possible. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you never know with him, you know. Derek's a sexy man, guys. I mean, it's just it happens, you know. Sometimes. Because, <laughs> sometimes, yeah, you know. It's part of being a rock star concept artist. All right. Um, okay, let's have a look. Doot, 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 doot. Okay, I have questions for Michal. Uh, yeah. What about the colors? When you start with line work, yeah. you have the initial idea what colors will you use? Or oh, you just yeah. um, line, up, line out everything and then start to thinking about the colors? Or you have the image in your head immediately? Uh, not really, because right now I'm like uh, really focused on the design itself. Uh, mm -hmm. Color can be anything later. I just I'll just see what will happen, and that that's something I do with all of my designs. <laughs> so, so nice question to you, Michal. You are yeah. single. <laughs> uh, yeah, I am. I'm married with my pencils, actually. You can see. <laughs> <laughs> Flippy lumpy. Yeah. Oh, Flimpy, Flippy Lumpy looks like a very attractive looking Asian guy. Maybe that's something for you, Mikael. An Asian guy, yeah, yeah, I'm into Asians, man, totally. Okay, cool, all right. Uh, I'll get you, you guys hooked up after. Cool, man. 
Dude, Ask you can be like a relationship thing. manager. <laughs> nice. <Yes. man. laughs> what an upgrade for my current job. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so, Mikael, um, would you mind talking a, a little bit about your industrial design background? Because I think that's quite interesting for people to know how that sort of affects yeah, I just both your career and your um, your art. Is yeah, where I started and it's um, I can explain it. I I kind of had always the passion for hardware and um, tanks and vehicles and all kinds. Weapons of death, actually. Not that I want to create them for real, but in the entertainment, they look really cool, you know. And um, yeah, it started all there. And um, I was since I was like 12, I already loved to come up with my own stuff. Of course, back then I really sucked at it, but um, I tried, you know. And then when I was 16, I played this game, it was Tiberian Sun, Command and Conquer, and it had some really cool science fiction designs which really grabbed my attention and I didn't only wanted to play the game but actually like be in it, you know, I really liked the mechs that they had and like uh, jet fighters with really stealthy looks and everything was so cool about it, you know. And that's when I actually decided that I want to be a concept artist because I saw like concept art for Tiberian Sun and I was like blown apart like whoa, people actually do it for a living, you know. And yeah, so I just like chased my dreams, you know, a little bit, and it all uh, turned out well, I guess. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, other than that, I still study a lot of. Um, I look at how things work. Every time I go outside, I look at cars. I look at engine parts. I take pictures of trains and all that stuff. So uh, yeah. Yeah, the thing that I like about people who have an industrial design background, uh, like I used to work with this guy uh, at Warner Brothers last year called Tani. He's, he's like a legend. He doesn't have a portfolio or any online presence, but he's worked on just about every major film that you've seen. Yeah. He's, um, he's a bit older, but um, his stuff is amazing. He's been around for a long time. He does a lot of stuff. And he's from an industrial design background as well. I yeah. think he started out his job as a um, car designer. I but the interesting I... thing about his designs, like when he was doing Spaceship, and you can tell with everyone who has an industrial design background, is that you think a lot more about functional design because yeah. you actually understand what the hell you're talking about. As, you know, like us, me and Derek, we have no clue what we're doing. We're just like, okay, I'll just put a bulk here. I'll just put it, yeah, the hinge kind of looks like it should be there, but like, we don't yeah, know. But what it looks doing. believable, right? And that's yeah. what matters at the end, so, yeah. I think so, yeah. I mean, like, I think I don't think stuff has to be able to work, but it has to look like it's able yeah. to. Yeah. You know, it's all in the entertainment industry, so it needs to appear, it can work in real life. You need yeah. to convince the audience that, hey, it might work. But the thing I'm drawing right now, it might never actually fly, you know. It's like pretty, yeah, fuzzy. Okay, Jonas, maybe I will start some overpaint right now. Okay. And so, Michael, when you entered your industrial design course, did you yeah. know about concept art or...? Oh, I actually never went to school or any concept art or industry-related school. I wanted to, but uh, okay. I was like, uh, re rejected like three years ago. I wanted to go here to HKU in Utrecht. Okay. And uh, yeah, I got like a formal letter that, yeah, that uh, my concept skills were not good enough and all that stuff. So, uh, but thank God there was like, I already had oh, a thanks. client. And he offered me a full-time job when he heard I'm not going to school, so that turned out well. Yeah, well, I guess that's another. Yeah, it's like great for the people to remind them that. No, but I'm really not, you know, demotivating people not to go to school because I think schools are a perfect place to hang out with your, with your peers, even though yeah. the teachers can suck and everything. So. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly right. I mean. Yeah. There's no alternative for school. Oh, well, there's many alternatives for school, but I mean, there is there is obviously benefits to going to school that you know even reach beyond what you learn. Uh, yeah. But you don't need it. That's something that we always keep saying. It's not it's not a necessity. There are plenty of self. Yeah, that's right. People who are very good. Yeah. Um, yeah, you can learn everything on your own. It's you know they they will not learn. Uh, uh, not you are the one who is you know teaching, who is the learning and yeah. Okay, I'm gonna start in exactly. a Okay.
So Michal, can you talk a little bit what you are doing right now? Yeah, right now I just like finished like the rough sketch, I guess. I don't know how many minutes are we now in? Uh, like 15. All right. So uh, yeah, I guess that's fine. Um, I'm not sure about the design yet, but I already started the um, the, uh, the second line pass drawing to flesh out the design better and the shapes of it. So uh, yeah, just, let's just see where it will bring us. Just uh, one nice. So this is a slightly cleaner version, but this won't be like your final uh, clean line, or is this the? Uh, I'll see. I think it might be like a decent line work, you know, maybe okay. because some of them can take like an hour or two, but since we have that much time, I can actually do it, you know? Yeah. Yeah, don't, don't rush, man. I mean, just do it at your own pace. Have your time. Okay, so the weekly question, Mikael, if you can be either Godzilla <laughs> or a billion... I knew it. Jesus, I knew it. Or Sailor Moon. What oh, link? or Sailor Moon. Uh, you like Asians, I think you should go for Sailor Moon. Or Godzilla's Asian as well. Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah, I was about to say. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think Godzilla, man. Yeah, see, the problem with Godzilla is nobody loves him. He's such a sad, such a sad dinosaur, you know? Yeah, but if I would be Godzilla, I would be, like, kinder. I would, like, destroy and blow, blow up cities, you know? Because that's yeah, but if you're Godzilla, Sailor Moon, the boys be all over you. If you're into that kind of thing. Yeah, that's it's a complicated question because I thought you'll be will be asking Godzilla or billionaire. Yeah, <laughs> you just just went to a whole new level. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so, Mikael, while you're working, can you not maybe merge or delete the the under under uh, layers with the sketching stuff so that when we share the PSD, people can look at the different stages of. Uh, Oh yeah, sure, sure, man. That would be cool, so they can sort of go back and see, see that stuff. Cool, no problem. I always keep my layers actually. So. Okay. So some people are asking about the industry uh, industry workshop, so I'll talk a little bit more about that. So for who, those who don't know, uh, I, I will be doing with a bunch of other people a workshop in London this summer about concept art. Uh, I actually met up with the whole team yesterday and they're an amazing bunch. I mean, they're so talented. It's going to be, it's actually stressing me out a little bit because they're so good and <laughs> experienced <laughs> and they've worked on so many amazing projects. Mm -hmm. But they're a really cool bunch and there a lot of different personalities and backgrounds and I think it will be, it will be quite varied. Uh, there's also, you know, people with, I, I'm probably one of the least experienced uh, guys there. Uh, there's also people with, you know, like plus 10 or plus 15 years experience. Mm -hmm. And yeah, a lot, a lot of different stuff. And we went to look at the venue. Um, it's a really nice place. It's in uh, Hoxton, which is in East London, which is a very cool area. So, you know, there's lots of bars and pubs and clubs and stuff around. So if, if you come from another country or if you come, if you're not from London, um, it's actually a very cool area to hang out after the workshop. It's not going to be a super formal workshop, so after the workshop's over, you know, we can all go and have a beer or whatever. And actually on the third day, because it's a three-day workshop, we've um, upped it, uh, there's also going to be a little party at the end, you know, so, you know, it, it, it's not going to be stiff, in, you know, in the same way that Level Up is not stiff, you know, just it's going to be. But we are going to talk business. We're not going to talk, uh, we're not going to focus that much on, like, small technical stuff like, oh, you know, if you use overlay, then you get this effect. If you use multiply, blah, blah, blah. We're not going to do any of that because you can find all that stuff online. And that's kind of pointless. Um, we're more going to focus on actually getting into the industry and what, you, what will separate you from someone who makes awesome bedroom drawings to someone who can actually work in a production pipeline because those are two very different things. It's not because you're a good painter who does good speed paintings online that you're a good, uh, you know, asset to a big production because they're different things. So we're going to talk more about real, in you know, real industry um, stuff, and we've got sponsors. So we'll have, and I think this will be the biggest plus for people who are coming to this workshop, 
if you bring your portfolio, we will have portfolio reviews. So we'll go over your, we'll look at your portfolios and give you critiques and stuff. And there will be sponsors from companies who will be looking to hire. So it might actually change your life if you bring some good work and you get hired. Um, I know we have MPC on board already. Um, Nice. A bunch of us work there, um, so yeah, this this could be really good, and it's gonna be pretty cheap compared to the last the last oh, workshop nice. from. Um, I can't announce it yet, but the tickets are gonna um, be released at the end of next week, so I'm, I can't announce it just yet. But I can tell you that the three day workshop that Jason Manley did, which was like a catastrophe in London last year, was like. 450 up to 500 pounds, and it's going to be uh, at least half of that price. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's going to be good. Like, there's almost going to be no, um, there's almost going to be no profit for us. But you know, we wish to do more workshops in the future if this goes well. Um, it kind of also depends on you know if the sponsors are happy. We're talking to Deviant Art and Imagine Effects, and you know all those. Companies nice. get them excited. So, but yeah, we'll, uh, I will post more um, more info about it in the coming months as it progresses, and I will definitely post when the tickets become available. The early bird tickets, which are going to be, you know, probably under under two hundred pounds um, next week. So, stay tuned for that. Cool. Nice. Okay, so let's have a look at the Tell me how you are right now cleaning up the shapes and make some Yeah, right now I'm like actually uh, doing the second design pass of the uh, uh, the drawing that I started. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, let's hope it turned out well. It's trying to come up with uh, yeah with cool shapes, also about a little tiny shapes, because that's the reason why uh, I do line art. You know, it's uh, There's this guy in the chat. He's so annoying. He's write, writing in caps all the time. His name is Espin Said Tervik. Who's that? Can we kick him? Is that possible? Can we like ban him? Oh, is my microphone off? <laughs> Shit. We love you, Espin. We're joking. We're joking. Also. I love that bearded Viking man. What's really cool about your work, Mikhail, is that we can see that you understand um, how mechanical things sort of work and look. That's a problem that I always have. Uh, I think it's a matter of practice and just looking at lots of photos and building yeah, like it is. Yeah. building a little reference library in your head about. I'm uh, sure you'll be fine, man. <laughs> well, thank you. I hope so. I'm pretty hungry, though. Well, eat. Yeah, I was actually cooking just before the session, but I didn't get to finish it. So now I it was there cold, and then I'm gonna have to microwave it after the session. My life is so sad, man. Like you have no idea. Really? It seems happy, man. You look like a happy man. <laughs> no, I'm a happy man. I'm joking. All right. Because <clears throat> I was about to cry a little bit. Um, so Dave asks, when you are doing this design pass, are you relying more on reference or on your visual library? Uh, both. Or probably yeah. both. Both, yeah, really both. Because yeah. I have like the major shape in my head, but I'm like looking at tiny bits of different eras when people were making stuff, and uh, yeah, so that will be it a little bit, I guess. Yeah, that's a good point that you bring up there because yeah. you have to you have to sort of look at. Yeah. The kind of word, world that you're working in, and yeah. what the sort of shape, exactly. shape language is. Yeah, it's, it's just, of course all of. Uh, sorry, it's always um, also about the design language as well. Yeah. Everybody has his own style, and uh, and uh, yeah. Other than that, it's. Um, you're always trying to make this cool mixture about uh, on functionality and what might uh, what looks cool, you know. 
because that's what this industry is all about. It needs to uh, look like, hey, this looks familiar, but in some way it is different, and that's why it's cool, you know, because people like fresh things, but if you do like random gibberish, then yeah, people will probably not like that, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, it's all about finding a balance. I know, between I hope it makes sense what I say. It's, um, no, no, it makes perfect sense, man. Yeah, um, so. I, it's it's basically because you you need to be able to relate to everything you see, but then again you don't want to relate too much. I mean sometimes right. you do it depends. Yeah. Like when you're doing science fiction, you don't want to relate too much because it has to look yeah. like something you've never seen before. Yeah. But still you have to ground everything in earth and physics and all those kind of things because otherwise you just you don't buy it basically. Yeah, exactly. Your brain just says no, this is BS. Yeah. Uh, are you so? Are you working on a, a tablet or a Cintiq? Uh, on a tablet, yeah. On a tablet, okay. Because people are very impressed by your straight lines. Straight oh, lines, nice. people. It's all about practice. Yeah. And nice. putting the movement in your arms and shoulders and not in your wrists. That's a mistake. That's right. Most common mistakes. Don't draw straight. Just don't draw with your wrist. Just draw with your arm. Much more muscle and much more finesse in there. Yeah. Let's see. <laughs> Laszlo is asking why the London workshop turned out to be a disaster. I have no idea. I wasn't there. Um, that's just kind of what I've been hearing. But I also don't want to badmouth anybody else. But, you know. Unfortunately, this last year's or two years ago, I don't know when it was, workshop gave a little bit of a rep, bad rep, reputation, but mm. this year it's going to be different. I mean, not that we have any affi affiliation anyway, but, you know, just trying to put London out there on the map. It's a good town. Okay. Hey guys, are you going to the Trojan horse was a unicorn? I'm probably not going. Is anyone else going? Nope. Uh, what's that? It's a workshop in Portugal. Mm -hmm. And it's called Trojan horse? Was a unicorn. It's a wordplay. Oh, all right. Jesus, never heard of it. I should be ashamed. Oh, no, really? Oh, I think it was quite successful last year. Um, it's a really nice location. Like it's um, it's very close to where my um, my grandparents are from. My my mom. Oh, nice. um, it's in Algarve, Algarve uh, area, south of Portugal. Um, and it's by the sea, so yeah. should be nice. Will be a nice workshop. Mikael, when you're working in a project, how many designs are you expected to show per day? Like 150? Yeah, that will be the average, yeah. Sounds no, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it depends on what level of detail they want to have them delivered, you know? If they like, want like rough sketches, then yeah, like 20 are expected, you know? Really, 20? Yeah, like 20 real fast roughies, you know? Oh, and it's more like silhouette work, or yeah, yeah, okay. silhouette work, very rough line work. But if you do like um, like type of line drawings, then we'll be looking at um, two, three, four a day. It depends if you have time to render it. It depends uh, from what sides they want it. Like if they want like back view, top view, then it takes, of course, uh, more time. Yeah. More time. Yeah. So uh, yeah, it, it really all depends. I really can say like this is number you need to do f to get an in industry, and this is <laughs> the amount. Yeah. It's really. That's exactly. Really, that's a good yeah. point. Um, people are always asking this, but the thing is, there's no real guideline for it. Yeah, exactly. Um, also, everyone's different. Everyone works at a different speed. No one's gonna shoot you down if you're a little bit slower. It's okay to be a little bit slower. Yeah, um, especially when you're in house. It's what I noticed. Yeah. So. Uh, Fine. More time, and it's not because you're faster that you're better. You know, like if you work fast, it's it's good, but you also tend to make more mistakes. 
So if you're slower, you might be more thorough, and you know yeah. your end result might have you know, some things that are better about it, more, more thought through. You know, so it's okay to be a little bit slower sometimes. Just don't exaggerate. You you can feel it once you start working somewhere. What's sort of expected, and yeah, you can always also just bluff a little bit. Just say like, oh, but this is you know this is a very complicated thing. Usually the people who ask you don't know what you know. Oh, I hope my clients won't hear this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't tell anybody. Shh. <laughs> I sense danger. Maybe. No, but I mean the opposite is true as well. Sometimes you know, sometimes clients expect that or something seemingly very easy is actually very difficult. For example, um, say that you're drawing a landscape. People might think like, oh, you know, all these crazy mountains in the background, that's so complicated, it will take you ages to draw every pixel of it, but, you know, yeah. a little plant in the foreground should be easy. Well, it's actually opposite. The mountains in the background are quite easy. You just, you know, lasso and paint, photo bash that stuff, yeah, and then exactly. maybe painting stuff in the foreground will take you ages. So, yeah, there's no way of knowing, really. <clears throat> it's up to your workflow only. Exactly. <laughs> so, any more questions? Because I have no idea what to talk about. I am looking right now. Cool. Uh, people are mostly talking to each other, which is nice. nice. Yeah, that keeps the, keeps the shit going. There's uh, Espen's asking questions about beer. Uh, of course. He's not he's not writing in caps anymore, so that's that's cool. Thanks, man. Where's the beer box in that chip? <laughs> AKA the fridge. Where is it, Mikal? Answer Espen. <laughs> Answer him. <laughs> I think it's on that panel on the uh, right hand side. There's a little lid that you can lift up. That's where you keep the beer. Maybe. Maybe not. Aspen wants to fight me. <laughs> Win a war act. <laughs> I will so lose to Aspen. Like, he'll bring out his... Viking skills, and I'll bring out my, well, Belgium. None. Um, Belgian. Well, actually, according to Caesar, we were actually like the toughest people ever. Yeah, dude, that's, that's down, not man. really the Belgian. Yeah, actually, yeah, I'll just talk to my friend Van Dam. There you go. JCVD, kick your ass, Aspen. He's like muscly and 55, and he can do a split. Never seen Espen do a split. <laughs> a skull split with a war axe. Uh, okay. <laughs> so someone's asking if you ever use photo textures. Are you just pure painting, rendering, or... Um... Yeah, I use photo textures a lot. Don't worry. Just not for this. You use it a lot? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, not in every painting. I use it a lot. Uh, I don't know what a lot is. It's, um... I use it... Um... When I do more environmental stuff, yeah, then I'll, I'll tend to use more photo textures. But also for vehicles, when I'm rendering them, I really like to have the grittiness of it and to speed things up. I'll just use textures of rust or that kind of things, you know. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> I'm gonna finish this over paint in maybe like ten minutes or something, so oh no wait, I haven't done the foreground yet. No, I'm gonna need some more time. <laughs> um, okay. Ooh, okay, a lot of questions. Now, can you talk a bit uh, about the practicing the line drawings? And oh, drawing yeah, sure. itself with pencils and all this stuff, the people because some of them are asking about your Pencil work and fundamentals in drawings. Yeah, uh, obviously I started, of course, doing stuff on paper. Uh, mm -hmm. 
when I was 16, I really like started to uh, get into line art. I saw um, Feng Zhu doing it and using it uh, very efficiently, and I was really impressed by it. And that's when I promised myself, Jesus, I got to learn it because he like does everything with line art, and it's so effective, and he makes pop everything with it, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, that's when I started to practice it, and. Uh, the way I practice it, it's just, yeah, I did it a lot, and uh, I think it just comes over over an amount of time. You just have Are it you still it. using pencils for your sketches? Uh, like on paper? Yeah. Um, no, not that much. No, not anymore. Mm -hmm. I really would love to, but yeah. Okay. Is there any books that you can recommend that would help with Mac design or anything that's sort of, yeah, of course. part surface? Look for yeah? uh, all okay. kinds of um, encyclopedias about tanks and planes uh, of all technological um, eras, like from the Second World War, from the 80s, Cold War technology, um, everything. Uh, like Make like a drawing of an engine or something if you're really into... Uh, industrial design and really will like melt in your soul you know the shapes the forms uh, the type of bolts that they are using and, and engine stuff mm -hmm. it's really uh, ah, that's interesting so for example instead of doing a film study or a portrait study like what people do all the time you would recommend doing a study of like a photo from an engine just to learn of course yeah the sort of just, yeah just random yeah. mechanical parts yeah and then, of course, do like silhouette studies of how a plane should look cool, you know. Then, like, focus less on what the functionality is and what type of bolt is using and where the engine is and how the propulsion goes. Just focus only on uh, on silhouettes. So it's like, yeah, there are like different types of learning it, different ways. So you would recommend the encyclopedia for building your own visual library for dialing the pieces, like you know, the tanks. That you are a concept on your own, and you know that making up the, the details all on the exact parts of vehicles. Um, I really can't understand. What, what is the question, please again? Uh, so, we, would you recommend to just uh, looking at the encyclopedias for the building up your visual library? Oh for, yes, of course. For yeah. the details, you know. Yeah. Of yeah, mechanics. For sure. That's for sure. Yeah, I have like uh, on my own. I have like a uh, tank encyclopedia that I got mm -hmm. like this year from a friend of mine, mm -hmm. and I have like lots and lots of other books to have good uh, industrial reference from. But I'm not <laughs> limited to it. I also like to do characters and landscapes and uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So maybe we can um, after the session we'll ask Mikael about this. Specific yeah, I think we should we should we'll add them to the, to the list. list. Yeah. Okay. Um. <laughs> Some of these questions. <laughs> Mika, what cup size do you like? What? I think they're talking. <laughs> what cup size do you like? I think they're talking about um, coffee mugs. I don't drink coffee. Okay, there we go. Yeah. No so. cup size preference. Cup size. <laughs> Mikael, I noticed you're not flipping your canvas during this drawing. When you're working on line art, and do you usually flip the image? Do you not need to because you're using the perspective grid? Yeah, actually, this is a good one. I forgot to. So uh, I think it's uh, not bad perspective at the moment. Right? If you see anything, just let me know, man. I'm looking at my overpaint, so oh shit, I'm not help you right now. Sorry, dude. I was counting on you, man. Sorry, man. I ain't <laughs> got you back. It's all Voitech's fault. He's not here. Let's blame him. The asshole. Yeah, he's such a dupeback. Right. <laughs> No, we love Wojtek, and we hope that he will join us in um, maybe yeah, like I love him too. I was just 30 minutes or something. So lucky. Love his work. Mm. 
there is a question to all of us. What kind of work would you recommend yeah. me doing if I would work want to work for movie science, fictional, fantasy, comic book, and all all this stuff? So maybe Michal, let's start. Sorry, can you repeat? Uh, yeah, what kind of work? Can you repeat what, kind, what, what kind of work would you recommend me doing if I would want to work for movies? I think environments yeah. are like the most um, um, asked asked things from a concept artist when you're doing stuff for uh, movies or TV shows. Yeah, mm, I I don't really entirely agree with that. Um, I mean, yes, in terms of getting hired, if you never worked in film before, yes. But I think um, there's a lot of production stuff that needs to be done in film that's not environment like props and vehicles and characters and stuff and those concepts don't have any environments in them of course. Um, so if, if you want to focus on that and they find you and your stuff's really good they'll hire you as well I've seen concept artists from many different fields with many different uh, different ex expertise um, I don't know what the plural is um, working in film so I think anything that you see in a film that you know that needs to be designed is actually something good to focus on um, just think, just remember that an art department, basically, or your your job as a concept artist in an art department, is to create things that don't exist in the real world. Because if they do, either set deck is going to go buy it somewhere, or they'll just shoot it on location, or they'll just buy stuff that exists. So you need to do stuff that doesn't exist, that will need to be built, or you know, three D printed, or put in with CG afterwards, whatever yeah. it is. Yeah, that's right. And those are the things that you need to focus on. But it doesn't have environments is definitely good because it tends to get more attention, but it's not required. If you want to focus on props or uh, weapon design, all that, it's all good stuff. So more variety in your works, like concepts of characters and the exact items, and of course the environments, and of of course the you know the design of environment totally. Yeah. Landscapes. Yeah. Yeah, it's really what you want to do as well, you know. It I never mean, hurts to be versatile. Yeah. 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 Just do what you like doing, and if you get good at what you like doing, people are gonna pay you money for doing what you like doing. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, like draw aliens with all kinds of real guns, and you just get money out of it. Oh, I love the real guns. Right. Yeah. Like when they load, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Love that shit. I love the real gun from uh, from Elysium. Jesus, <laughs> I've seen like fifteen times. And if you notice from Elysium, you know, oh Elysium, yeah, yeah. There's like a scene when uh, the main character is like on on Elysium already, and it's like shooting these guys apart with a huge gun. And you see like arms f like flying in the air, but you can only notice it if you like look really closely. It's a really violent scene. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, it's, an arm and like the half of his head, you know, just Jesus. Yeah, Did you look at that frame by frame? <laughs> no, I just a lot of times. It's for research, man. Yeah, it's a good thing to do to look at films. Yeah. In terms of research, because there's a lot of money going into production, so things are really thought out. Sometimes too much, even you know. <laughs> yeah. Um, things get over concepted and over designed and over, you know, because. There's just so much at stake, so many people involved. Uh, gets a bit messy sometimes, but still, uh, usually it's you know, it's like top work in terms of cinematography, um, design, you know, all these kind of things. Storytelling, not so much, um, but apart from that, Michal, I have questions uh, about your work. Uh, yeah. What? What's your insight into 3D? Do you use 3D for your concept art, or do you have some assets from your client? Uh, yeah, works? sometimes clients give me like blockouts mm -hmm. like with a main silhouette, or like a silhouette from a scene, how the camera should go. Then I just paint it over, and sometimes I just make like a final render uh, out of a 3D uh, object. Mm -hmm and make it like final based on my earlier sketches. But I design really in 2D because my brain works best when I do this stuff. And, uh, so usually and, and you don't the, use 3D for your own to just... No, just for more for more final looking pictures. Mm -hmm. Then I use uh, 
to use 3D. Okay. Because sometimes, like um, like with the scorpion tank, um, mm -hmm. I did. That was like um, I did like a lot of line drawings, a lot of iterations, and then I made like the main body shape when I established the design for myself. My head, like, all right, this is it. I made like the body shape in Maya, and then I just like um, copied the half of the body and like um, mirrored it, and then I had like the half of the body of the tank and. Mm -hmm. I lit like a light source on it, so I didn't uh, have to figure the light on it that hard anymore because I had like uh, because the shape was really complicated, right? Mm -hmm. So Maya really helped me to establish the lighting of it, and then once uh, I added, I went to Photoshop and rendered it all all all, uh, all out. The tracks. The so, but you're not body. usually. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Continue. Um, no, I just want. I was just wondering. So you're not actually using a render from Maya or whatever 3D program. You're still painting everything to do. You're just using like a base render as a base, but you're overpainting it, right? Yeah, now. but not always. Yeah, it's usually okay. it's still just for me uh, 2D what I'm using. So really old school, yeah. I guess. So yeah, I mean, like have more. Co Sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Yes. Uh, I was just going to say, like, I mean, 3D is not a necessity. A lot of people think it is. You don't have to have no, it. It's not. 3D guys working that are very successful, but it's definitely good. Like, you know, if it you is. can, yeah. do it. It's it's great. It's going to help you. Of Basically, course. the more tools you have at your disposal, the more powerful, so to speak, you will become. That's right. But it also speed up the process some, sometimes, you know, if you are really, you know, fluent with 3D. You have a lot of, you know, chance and possibilities to to do some stuff that you don't need to do in free to do two D at first. Yeah, I think that's one of the greatest benefits about three D is that you're not stuck to your sort of single image. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you know, clients like that that they're able to move stuff around. And the problem with two D is that it's very. I mean, you can you can change stuff within the composition, but like. Just moving a camera like from a low angle to maybe more of an aerial view, it's pretty much impossible. Like you sort of got to start over, mm -hmm. and that that kind of sucks. Yeah. So. Okay, here's a pretty interesting question. Cool. Mikael, when do you think something is over designed or something is too too simple? So basically, how do you find a balance between simplicity and uh, complexity? Uh, yeah, usually I just like zoom out like this, you know, to see where all right, where is it like overdone? Where could where there could be something added, you know, to make the design more interesting? Because the whole meaning of it is that I do this line artish design to flesh out the whole design, you know. Um, so. Mm -hmm. I, it's not a super tight line drawing, but it's pretty production ready. I hope it will be able to finish it uh, soon. How many minutes are we in? We are five. almost. Yeah, almost fifty. All right. Um, and so maybe I think my overpaint's almost done. So in a minute we okay. can switch to my screen, and I will yeah. talk a little bit cool. about the overpaint. Right now. Uh, no, not yet. Just give me like another okay. something. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for the question, guys. Uh, I really do it also for um, for for everybody to show a little bit of my techniques. So uh, yeah, keep asking if you ask questions, of course. Yeah, it's very cool again to see a different workflow. We're seeing different. Different ways of starting an image every single week, which is amazing. Which just goes to show that there's there's no you know. Yeah. Yeah, I think he's the first one who is starting with that you know details sketch line, line art on our our show. It's amazing to see it. Yeah, that's what I thought about it. I thought about doing uh, maybe also a landscape or a scene or interior design, but. Um, yeah, we didn't see the vehicles, and we didn't see a lot of um, line drawing, I guess. So there is some question. I think we can, three of us can respond to it. Do you think copying or reproducing another artist and his style will improve your skills? Uh, <clears throat> maybe 
if you rip something off, uh, absolutely not. Uh, in artistically way, you you should go into the industry. But if you are inspired and trying to imply some techniques from what you observed and you really like, it's okay. I think that's it's really good to make some studies also from masters or or you know your idols or something. But don't try to rip them off in your commercial work because you still will end up like like the second one, not the first one who invented the style or something. You don't you need to, you know, repeat be repetitive with the style stylish things. But definitely inspiring and being inspired is a great thing. That's my point. Yeah, I think you have yeah, to that's a good thing. Yeah. You have to um, know the difference between you know study doing a study and just copying someone. Um, doing studies is always fine. And I think you can really learn a lot about someone's technique, like a master, by actually just stud doing studies of his work, copying that exact work. Um, yeah, but I think it, when it, it needs to be done very del you know, deliberately. With you have to know what the benefits can you know can be in, and come to you. When yeah, and you it do some studies study. like, like you shouldn't steal someone's work. Exactly. Or you shouldn't copy it in terms of creativity, like from a creative or originality kind of point of view, that's that's when it becomes pointless to copy someone else because yeah. they'll be just like, oh yeah, but that looks like that dude's work. Uh, and the worst thing is doing it mindless, you know? Yeah. I think there's questions to maybe Jonas. What 3D program is the most important to concept artists? What do you recommend to Jonas? Ooh. I don't know, man. Like, there's, there's not really one. Um, I use SketchUp and Cinema 4D, and I'm recently started using Modo. I like all of them for different reasons. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people use Maya. Maya is very good, but it's very big and robust. Same with 3ds Max. Very good. A lot of people use it. A uh, bit too old school and you know chaotic for me, but mm -hmm. it doesn't really matter, you know. Like. If if you know how to it's use the program, just a tool, right? Yeah, they can all do the same pretty much. I mean, if you don't have any money, use Blender. Blender, you can do everything with Blender. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's open source, it's free. Like you don't even need to pay for a three D program. Mm -hmm. It's really up to you. But I think for people who are not super three D minded, uh, the easiest program to learn is SketchUp, but it's also the most limited. But for basic, um, you know, blocky stuff, it's actually really yeah. good at setting up cameras. And then after that, I would probably say, in terms of modeling, Moto is probably uh, the easiest one to get into. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, but I, I mean, that's an investment that you have to make, that you, you know, have to want to make. Not everyone's down for that, because, you know, mm -hmm. they're not cheap, you know. Um, and one of my issues with Moto, but maybe other people don't have, have this, I feel like it's very unstable. Like it crashes a lot, <laughs> and when I work in Cinema 4D, it never crashes. Like it's super stable. Um, so yeah, maybe something to think about. You should probably get a good mach machine if you wanna if you wanna use Moto. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm going to. Uh, oh yeah, and I didn't mention ZBrush, of course. Thanks, uh, chat people. <laughs> Obviously, ZBrush is amazing for artists. Um, definitely if you're a character artist, but you can do props and you can do environments as well. I think uh, Ben Morrow has some nice tutorials about doing like more complex stuff in, in ZBrush. Um, I think the m main thing that I don't like about ZBrush is that they refuse, like literally refuse to make the interface user friendly or like anything else we've seen. It's like the alienation that we were talking about before. You don't want stuff to be too far away from Earth. Well, I would like when I open a program to have file, edit, image, and so on. <laughs> but ZBrush yes, like, yeah. no, documents here and file is over there and that's over there. So you really have to you really have to train yourself and go through like the training of ZBrush to actually be able to use it. But once you do, it's an amazing program. Um, definitely for organic stuff. You can do amazing hard surface stuff as well. But I think still if you're doing hard surface and you know what you're doing, I think Modo or 3ds Max is a lot more powerful because you can do it more precise and you can build much, much cleaner um, geometry 
or topology. And that's that's a bit tricky in, in ZBrush, I think. Mm -hmm. Unless you're like a ZBrush Pro, some some people are. But yeah, there's there's so many different softwares out there. Um, there's a lot of great renders as well. Uh, you know, V-Ray is very good. It's very sturdy. It's a bit slow, but it's very good. Um, Keyshot is everyone's favorite. I use Keyshot a lot. Uh, I know Espen uses Keyshot. I know a lot of people use Keyshot. Um, but yeah, in like production houses, I've seen people use, you know, a lot of Maya. Um, I've seen people use Rhino because it's also like, it, I've seen people use Rhino for like set 3D set design and stuff. Yeah, just look into it, you know. I mean, there's so much there's so much stuff to, to use. A great renderer as well as Arnold. We're using it MPC now. Arnold is an amazing renderer. Like, it can just eat polygons like it's nothing. You can put a scene with, like, a trillion polygons. I'm not exaggerating. And a frame will render in no time. It's crazy. Like, mm -hmm. I think all the Elysium stuff, the shots, like, they fly through Elysium. That's all rendered in Arnold. And, like, the geometry on that is so detailed. It's crazy. Like, every tree... Is full poly trees. They don't use alpha maps or cards or any of that shit. It's like it's just all every leaf is actually you know geometry. Nice. Um, okay, but enough tech talk. Let's switch to my screen. Okay. And wait, hold on. Still seeing my face. Is that? Okay. So screen share. Okay, so this is a piece by, doesn't say, but I think his name is Johnny van Bussen. Um, and it's a value piece because it's in black and white, so I kept it that way. But um, Johnny's actually, he's trying to apply a very typical sort of, you know, concept art trick that we all use, which is dark foreground, um, light background and a, a sort of fade of values as you go into space, which is good. It works. It reads well. But he has not applied it correctly. Um, as you can see here, uh, let me just get my marker here. Oops. Come on. Oh, my caps lock is on. There we go. So here is a, a dark... And you... <laughs> Red. <laughs> why? Why is this not working? Am I? Oh, I'm just in grayscale. There we go. There is actually no color information. What the hell, man? <laughs> Cannot seem to put a single red line in this image. There we go. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I'm just being a hit. Here, this value is much darker than this value. Look, I'll show you with the color picker. Ooh, very dark. Much lighter. That's not good because if you're going that far into space, the value should be a lot, lot lighter in what you're trying to do here. Here again, weird value conflicts. Let's have a closer look. Um, the sky should probably be brighter than the rocks. It just makes it look strange. Uh, Johnny applied a single light, like sort of direction light here from coming from that way, which is good. He applied everywhere. But, um, you know, here this stuff wouldn't catch this light. This stuff wouldn't catch this light. A lot of stuff here wouldn't catch this light. So there's still a lot of stuff for him to learn in terms of value. And then obviously painting technique, um, you know, is, is at, a, at a low level, but that's just a matter of practice. So he'll just have to keep practicing that. He'll get better. Uh, so I'll just show my overpaint. So... This is sort of my version. Well, as it looks now, I might want to make the character maybe a little bit bigger. Nice, man. Uh, so I used some photo textures to get some more detail in there. And actually, basically, just used this texture here. And then I just cut pieces out of it and stretched them to turn them into the mountains. So I kind of tried to follow the shapes that he had here. But what you can see, if you look in the thumbnail, is that my mountains read and his don't. And why is that? Because I'm placing, I'm using local contrast. So I've got a bright color here in the sky and I've got a dark color on the mountain. Um, same again here, like the sky gets brighter here, so I make the mountain darker. 
sky has been darker here, so I make the mountain brighter. So, so you don't have to actually like literally follow like, okay, this is one meter from me, this is that value. You go two meters from me, it's a lighter value. Three meters from me, another lighter value. Like, you know, that's generally the gist of what people are trying to do here, but you don't have to do that, um, you know, anally. That's not a pun. That is correct English. <laughs> um, so it's more like called controlling the values on the picture. Yeah, it's controlling the values, and it's understanding that when you place one value against another, that that actually decides how you read the form and the shape. Mm -hmm. I think that's the most important thing. Um... And so, yeah, Johnny, maybe try using some photo textures. I mean, obviously, you have to work on your painting technique, but actually using photos, you will st start to understand how real-world shapes um, sort of are, and then you can try to replicate that. Or just look at references. That's another way of doing it. Mm -hmm. And then I just drew some, like, badass character with, like, spikes and a, nice. a staff. Uh, I made this foreground element, the pods here, more dark so that, you know you get like a almost fully dark foreground element and just a little bit of light here um, you know if I let's see if I merge these and I'll use my lighting button um, you know you can always you can always paint some some like highlights somewhere if you want to put you know some focus on it uh, just think about the, the value that's next to it basically um, you know, I think sometimes it's good not to make everything too dark because that's not really what happens in real life. You actually see a lot. <laughs> Definitely on a sunny day, you probably see everything. But, you know, we're trying to make stuff readable, so that, that's why we do it. But you can, um, you know, where there's, like, see here, I've got a pretty dark sky and a pretty dark silhouette. I could probably, like, you know, put, like, a little rim light, see, and that that's probably how the light, maybe, how the light might hit there. Um, I'm not sure. Could be wrong, but you know, doesn't look too bad. Yeah, awesome. awesome. Uh, okay. Yeah. So. Okay. Let's... Go back to Michal. Yeah. Yeah. So I already did like a um, fast um, color pass. Like he's playing this like flying in the sky, like really, really rough. Um, busy with the clouds now a little bit to uh, make it clear that the thing is in the air. Uh, mm -hmm. And after it, I'll try to uh, to make a color version of it. I have no idea how to use photo textures. Can you show us briefly how it's done? If for you, Jonas, maybe I was... Yeah, check out, check out session nine, which is the first session with me. Yeah. I actually talk about um, photo texturing for quite a bit. And I think most of the, uh, uh, most of the interesting information is, is there. <laughs> yeah, um, and of course we will still, we'll still have saved the PSD file so we can see how it's, you know... Yeah. Uh, it's uh, arrange everything on the layers. So. Flo Munye um, just notified me that my mountain exactly touched the top of the picture. That's right. I hadn't seen that because I um, wasn't focusing. But don't ever put something exactly on the edge. It's called a tangent, and it doesn't look good. Uh, so I'll, I'll change that now. Thank you, Flo. Uh, just not to touch the you know the, the corner of the canvas, but if something is going from the corner and it's not shown... As a whole, it's okay. Yeah, I, think just, I found it pretty nice in the compositioning my my pictures, and doing some thumbnails where the objects are very big and they are part, partly cut only on the canvas, and they it looks pretty uh, movie alike and very very you know it's it looks very balanced. There. So if there is no touch of the you know the, the final curve touch the canvas, it's not alright. But if it's cut in some parts, there is okay. Yeah, yeah. You can sort of feel it. Just, um, just give stuff space to breathe, and just avoid tangents. So, but you know, in real life, you get them. You get tangents. You in photography, I've taken pictures and I notice tangents. That's how you get those funny, uh, you know, some of those funny pictures on the internet that look like something weirds going on. It's just because something is just right on the edge of something else, and you can't really tell because it kills depth. 
And it's yeah. basically just a malfunction in our brain. Like, we don't know how to interpret it. That's exactly what we're trying to apply when we paint, like, mm -hmm. values, and we use value separation and stuff. Um, because we're trying to make it easy on our brain, we're trying to make it as easy as possible. And we're trying to make us be able to see what's going on in the blink of an eye. Mm -hmm. And that's that's not how... Um, how it is in the real world, you know. Um, if you go outside into the street and you look around, there's a lot of information to process, and you actually you don't process most of it. Like, you know, sometimes I look at my photos from, like, travels and stuff, and I start looking around, and it, I've got a high-res camera, so there's a lot of pixel information. And there's just so much stuff everywhere that I, like, never saw when I was there that I'm amazed by, you know, like little details, little signs, you know, little things that hang up around buildings and... Yeah. It's it's all there. Yeah. I don't know how I got to that point. Anyway. Uh, but there's something that you see on the not on the first glance, right? And you can notice yeah. many things that are going in the background or, or on the picture after you see it more, more times. Yeah, and like like yeah, like you say it's like it's it's the thing about the first glance, you know. For example, if you're watching a movie, a lot of shots that take days and days to produce with lots of content. You only see them for a couple of seconds. Yeah. So if you're not able to see what's going on with, in a couple of seconds, then it's pointless. Um, because, yeah, you just don't know what you're looking at and why did we put all this money and work into it then, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I personally like pictures that, that require a little bit more, um, how should I say, like examining. Um, some of my older work that's like super detailed work has a lot of stuff in the picture that you will only see if you actually look around and look for it that tells you more about the story or the environment mm -hmm. um, but you don't see it at first glance the, the first thing that you see and still the most important thing is the big shapes and the values and those two make up like the main composition in terms of shape and in terms of um, you know value difference and so that's that's still what you should be focusing on most of the time and then after that, it's sort of up to you how much you want to go into details. So, Michal, you are in, right now. You are putting some local colors on your on your vehicle. Yeah, I'm trying to make. Um, I'm like uh, made the background a little bit, and as of right now, I'm filling the vehicle with uh, with its main uh, local color. But maybe it won't be the final color. You know, just see, just filling them out. So later on, I can play with uh, with the shades and light on it, and where the where, where shadow goes, where the where the how the lighting goes, everything. So yeah. Let me check for some questions. I'm really hungry. Oh my god. Go eat something. No man, like I've got this delicious dinner that's waiting for me and I just <laughs> want that. I don't wanna you know how sometimes you, you're waiting for a big meal and people are like, Yeah, but you can have yeah, so you can have something small now. It's like, I don't want the small thing, I want the big thing. <laughs> the small thing is only gonna make me less hungry because then my stomach after five minutes is gonna think like, Oh, is that all? and then go quiet. So I'd rather starve and then have like a massive plate of food. <laughs> <laughs> nice. There is some interesting question. Uh, I think it's uh, to Michal. Yeah. Uh, can you you sh you are just putting the same kind of local color on overall the vehicle? So w wouldn't it be faster if you just uh, make a selection of all the seal houts and fill them with gradient or something? Um. And after that, you can just go and make some uh, hand strokes. Yeah, that's actually colors. right. But I really actually didn't think about it. I mm -hmm. um, just went on straight to painting as I was like doing the background and I just went up. But it's a good point, yeah. You can do that. you can do it like that as well. It's more of a traditional approach in the end. It doesn't really matter how you do it. It's just a different way of working. I yeah. think what Mika's doing is just a traditional way where you have a line drawing and then you have to fill it in manually. That's how I used to do it. And it gets yeah. a slightly different look than if you just like, you know, cleanly just fill the whole thing with the gradient and paint over that. So yeah, of course. 
you can still leave some strokes and make you know just a texture or a suggestion. Yeah. Yeah, this stuff actually reminds me a lot of uh, Miyazaki's drawing of um, aircrafts, different types of air, you know, airships and stuff. He also loves this sort of, you know, um, lots of bolts and panels and yeah, um, sort of more older like World War Two type designs. Yeah, I really like that kind of stuff. Yeah, it's really. Um... Because you still have like the challenge that you just can't come up with random parts because it still needs to look like it's from that technological te technological era. Mm -hmm. So it's not like pure science fiction where every shape is like something from the future, you know. So uh, yeah. Yeah, it's more like an al alternate reality kind of approach. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And so you you're you're using the light that you use in the background, the sort of bluey from the background. You're you're yeah. using that yeah, exactly. to um, yeah. reflect the environment on your. Yeah. <clears throat> hey, Leo. Lot of people talk about study. How exactly do you guys do it? With some another question from the chat. I don't do studies. I don't think anyone's ever seen a study from me because I, for some reason I don't do studies. I probably should. Uh, I'd probably be a better painter if I did some studies, but mm -hmm. I just, I don't know, I like to make my own stuff. So I'll ask that question to someone else. Yeah, so, but you are, st if you are still doing something and working really like on, your, on your own, you are still trying to, uh, you know, fit it in into the nature, nature and be more, you know, yeah, aware of what you are doing and keep it real somehow. So that's that's that also can be studied, you know. It's it also can be called static because I also do my yeah. that my works and I pff, I, just, I just don't do studies. Maybe some animals if I <laughs> want, like horses or something. But I still want to do uh, the study like an illustration. So I just make some horse from the photo or the real or the still life, and after that I add my own history into it. So. It's the study with its own benefits that it's became the no, you know, the new illustration. So, yeah, I think you have to sort of be clear about the terms that we use because, like, the terminology is a little bit confusing for people. When I talk about study, I mean look, taking an image and copying it and trying to paint the same. What you're talking about, I would call it using references. Mm -hmm. And obviously, of course, I use reference, and you have to use references. You're going to be a much better artist if you use references, and you're going to make much more believable stuff. So you have to look at stuff. You have to build visual library. You have to use yeah. references. Um, you know, no matter how much you think you know. Yeah, Do but I think that you can still call the study also observation. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. analyzing the yeah. thing, so it's also the part of study. And as you yeah. said, uh, building your own visual library. Yeah, yeah sure, sure. I think when you're doing like literally a study where you're taking a photo and repainting it, mm -hmm. you're just studying something else because you're not really studying the design language and stuff that much yeah. um, as if you would when you're using references because then you're more like, okay, how does this thing look or how does it work? And I think with a study, a photo study, it's more about understanding color mm -hmm. um, and, and, and light and those kind of things um, because you have to... It's, it's a different thing, you know. One thing is more of a design thing, and the other thing is more of an art thing, I think, mm -hmm. personally. Um, so what about, what about you, Michal? Are you doing some studies or not? Uh, well, not anymore, because I'm really busy with uh, work. But okay. whenever I have free time, I always feel like I should do some anatomy if I didn't done it in a while. Mm -hmm. Or I should do some landscapes if I'm only like stuck with client work, which requires me to do environments only or uh, tech stuff only. So uh, yeah. yeah. So it's for us. It's more like making up for things that uh, we didn't yeah, do previously. Yeah. For now, yeah. It's like because you want kind of to stay fit, like and and yeah. it's exactly. Really, it's really not that easy, but still I'm trying, you know. And, and that's the way to catch up, you know. Because some mm -hmm. projects really re require like one thing only from one kind, you know. They want you to make a whole um, bunch of vehicles in like for the coming three months. You'll be doing nothing more than that. So yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's good to spend your free time 
with um, with other stuff. Mm -hmm. How's your overpaint going? Uh, I'm just painting uh, the horse, <laughs> so I think I need a bit, uh, maybe ten more minutes to finish it. Okay. Uh, Mikael, so you're manually controlling the opacity. Is there a reason that you do this instead of using transfer or pen pressure or anything like that? Pen pressure. I have pen pressure. Pen pressure is on. Okay. You well, mean like pen, like pen pressure for... Uh, no, I think um, the question is because you, I, I, I'm assuming because your opacity is at 33 that you manually change the opacity. Yeah, like find five, it easier five, than, Yeah. 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 I think it's harder sometimes to control the pen pressure. I mean, there's a lot of sensitivity in it, but still, you, you don't have that much control always to how hard you press. And it's, it's it works a bit different because if you're if you're working at a lower opacity, yeah, everything is going to be at a lower opacity, so you've got like a safety sort of that you'll never have like it. Yeah, I think so. For me, it's I think uh, more that I um, I'm used to. Uh, Traditional stuff. So mm -hmm. even even though I'm drawing digitally, and even though I uh, do use photo textures and some white pieces and 3D, when I paint, I really like to have the feeling that I paint. Mm -hmm. um, I think there is no tool in real life which gives you like the harder you push, the better or the more harder the color becomes, right? Mm -hmm. there's, there's no transparency stuff um, like that. Maybe well, aquarelle, yeah. maybe aquarelle a little bit, but. Yeah, I mean watercolors, but it's more about layering and how much paint you apply rather than yeah. how hard you push the actual brush. Yeah. Yes, I'm painting the horses. It's for the guy who is asking on the chat. <laughs> of course, it's Derek's trademark animal. <laughs> I did a 3D model of a horse, like a rigged one, like in the last few weeks when I had some time off. So I finally have like a proper 3D model of a horse. So I'm never painting a freaking horse again, guys. <laughs> I just don't understand horse. I've tried painting horses, just I just can't do it. So I'm just I'm just gonna do, do the easy way out, and I'm just gonna. You should study, man. You should study. Paint over it. <laughs> and I animated him, so I got him like running and jumping. So I can basically just set up the camera, and any angle, even like a crazy, you know, wide angle from the ground, you know, and I'll have the perfect horse. Take yeah, as, right. I, as I said, I'm trying to apply a more uh, small knowledge into the painting horses as I can because. Uh, I'm thinking about doing some class about painting the animals and focusing mostly on the horses because I know that a lot of people are struggling it, with it and a lot of people are li liking the horses. So if they are painted very good, the people will like it because it's pretty hard. It's you know it's, it's very hard. It's very That's hard. It's it's one of the most hard thing. Uh, it's it's like you know the painting the hands. And uh, in different poses from your from your from your head, mm -hmm. but you know I find it a bit easier for myself. I don't know why, but I but I thought I would share with you some knowledge about it. So I am thinking about the, starting the class, and some the guy the guy uh, called uh, Matthias Schmidt uh, sent me a great book by. Um, let me check. Oh, is it the German one? Yeah, it's a general one. I think it's Bems, and it's uh, the guest of the series. Uh, this is the title, the title, and it's more than hundred pages. You know, it's focusing only on the horses, so it's amazing. And I'm preparing a lot of things, a lot of knowledge gathered into one, you know, place. And I will let you know about when I when I try to run the class. So stay tuned for it because I think it's it's gonna be so cool. Yeah, it's very cool. Does the book uh, break down the animals in like simple geometry, or you know, skeleton or anything like that, or is it? Uh, yeah, it's part. Actually, it has a, a lot of you know the things that shows like the deep muscles work, how mm -hmm. the deep muscles work, and 
how the muscles are reacting on the, you know, why they're moving. Yeah, and in the different really poses, cool. it's great because it shows all the direction from above, from beneath the horse, how it, how the body is, you know, created and how the all the anatomical issues are in there. So it's amazing. Yeah, that's actually I think for people that's that's the most important thing to 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 think about. Also, when you're painting people, um, definitely when you're painting animals like horses and stuff, is that you have to understand what's going on beneath the surface because that yeah. decides what's going on above the surface. Because basically, when you look at a painting, let's say you're looking at a painting from a horse, the way that you read the shape is by the value differences. Yes, and The exactly. value differences are differences in form, and the form is completely decided by the muscle structure that is beneath the skin. So why do you see light hitting on certain areas on a horse's back or legs? It's because the muscle has a certain curve there, and that's catching light. And if you don't understand those muscles, like me, you don't know where to put a light stroke, and you're never going to get it yeah. right. Um, but if you understand it, you know, like, okay, there's, a, you know, there's something beneath the surface here, and this is going to catch light. You put a stroke there, and it catches light, and bam, like your form reads. It doesn't even have to be detailed. Like if you look at Derek's horses, they're pretty rough usually they're painted pretty rough but they look good because you know he knows what he's doing mm -hmm. so yeah it's also about the different gener generous of the horses because uh, the ones are you know some issues with with the proportions that are sometimes they are good and people are thinking that it's not all right but there are some generous that, that oh yeah shows yeah, that shows that the proportions are all right, but we think that are that I that are not right because we we probably saw a lot of you know the. Uh, well, we have a generic idea of a yeah. horse in our head, and that's something that we always reference to. So if it deviates from that, we think that it's wrong. But um, <laughs> I got a I got a critique on one of my horses once. Someone <laughs> said that the body was too short or that the horse was too small or something. But actually, I painted that from a reference, and it's exactly the same proportion as that horse. It was just a small, skinny horse. And that's just how he looked. But, admittingly, when I tried to change it to, like, the more, you know, generally accepted proportions of a horse, it also looked better to me. Like, I also thought, like, okay, this looks more like how I think a horse looks like. So, in the end, it's a choice that you have to, you have to make. Yeah, it's, like you said, it's about understanding everything is the same with anatomical stuff of the people like, you know if you understand how the muscles and how the skeleton works it's mm -hmm. much easier for you to to just do your own pictures with your own lighting you know accommodations and mm -hmm. Okay, now something exactly. else. Kristen asks, can you recommend any companies that are good to start working for more approachable than Warner Brothers or Disney? Uh, yeah, you probably, if you don't have any experience, you probably shouldn't approach Warner Brothers or Disney because you'll just never hear from them. <laughs> I mean, they get so many applications. You're better, you know, to just practice and wait until they contact you. That's actually more likely. Uh, one thing that I can recommend, maybe, where there's actually a lot of work and where maybe your level doesn't have to be super high, is mobile companies, like companies that focus on mobile games or mobile apps and stuff, because they actually need a lot of um, they need a lot of people. There's a lot of a lot of companies that do mobile apps and games and stuff, and they need concept artists. Um, it might not always be the most exciting stuff that you've been working on, but some stuff might be good. You know, like some mobile games are amazing. I mean, look at uh, what's it called, Infinity Blade, and uh, those kind of things. So yeah, I think that's maybe some something that Kristen can have a look into. Mm. Yeah. So you for you, yep, yeah, Michal. You yeah. worked for the Isotox, right? And they are also kind of indie, indie company. Uh, yeah, yeah. I worked for them. I stopped. I resigned like in, uh, last November. Mm -hmm. but, yeah, I worked for the past two years, um, doing yeah all kinds of stuff for them, like also landscapes, vehicles, um, characters, just um, defining their whole universe. And it was fun. It was uh, yeah, I enjoyed it a lot. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I got, you did a lot of amazing job for them, man. Yeah, thanks, man. You too. Jesus. 
Yeah, but all my promo stuff was based on your concept or so. It was also it's amazing. And I was looking at oh Jesus, how how many details I have to put into that tank <laughs> and all this. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> uh, so Mikael, when if you finish up this painting, are you going to leave the line work visible, or are you going to blend it with the background colors? A little bit. I just um, just now I like erased the top a little bit um, to make the the value pop out in a better way. But uh, yeah, the the more I render, the less uh, line drawing I will need to mm -hmm. hold the pieces together. If you if you know what I mean. Yeah, so it's more a guide um, than actually a style. Choice. Yeah, now it's a guide because design design myself, I could like um, if I were asked like, all right, this this is done because we already have the line drawing. Now make another variation, you know. So uh, usually it goes that, and what I'm doing now is more of a luxury thing, like a mm -hmm. show off design stuff, you know. And uh, yeah, hopefully I'll be able to cover it all. Cool. Jonas, people are asking about the female guest. <laughs> oh, you sexist. <laughs> right? <laughs> you don't like men. Um, I think we have a female guest in two weeks, right? Yeah, I think so. We have a male guest again, sorry. Uh, but in two weeks we have a female guest. Mm -hmm. And that's actually, yeah, well, two weeks. Yeah. So stay tuned a bit more. Yeah. <laughs> Right. You don't like men. Um, I think we have a female. <laughs> <laughs> I just <laughs> is that to turn off the sound of YouTube for a minute? <laughs> it's not Suzanne, Amanda. Sorry, but we'll bring her on at some point. I'm sure she's keen. Um, but it's it's someone else in two weeks. I actually I don't want to talk about future guests because we actually have a long lineup. And there's some really yeah, we don't want to announce the name before you know one week. But yeah, we don't want to announce it because it just we don't want people to just come for one person. Like we yeah. think that you know you should give like everyone a chance. Attention. Like yeah, attention. Because everyone we have here is amazing in their own respect, and you can always learn something. So we don't want to yeah. you know give other people more you know, more light or anything like that. So. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, Flo is asking if we will do some more character focused over paint. Well, Voitech is usually the guy for that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but yeah, no, we can do that. Um, I think for me personally, the reason that I choose to do more environments is because, well, I'm more experienced in it, and mostly I can do it a lot faster. Um, you know, like the one that I showed today, I did in, I don't know, 20 minutes or so. Mm. And characters, even though it's just a single character, it's actually a lot of work. And it, it for me, yeah, it's all, it also depends on what, what character it is. Yeah, of course. It's a monster or something. Yeah. It's much much easier to do without the references than the, the you know the uh, appropriate people anatomy. Yeah, but it would be cool if we get someone who um, we'll probably get someone to like a character demo or something. I mean, like now Mikael's doing a, uh, you know a mech design, which is different from what we've usually had. Mm -hmm. um, so you know, we try to mix it up and get different stuff. There will be different stuff always, uh, so don't worry about that. Just, just keep watching Level Up, I guess. Yeah, we are always trying to invite <laughs> someone who is who has some you know some. Exact something. points, something yeah. special, right? Yeah, yeah, and we don't we don't really discriminate on how famous someone is, because um, I think it's good to have people who are famous and very experienced. But it's also good to have people who are even still, you know, students. Um, if they have, you know, everyone has no, amazing. Yeah. So it doesn't really matter. Yeah. <clears throat> so what's the time guys? 
It's 7.30, so we've got uh, 30 more minutes. Um, we could stretch it, but I don't want to stretch it because I'm hungry. I've mentioned it many times. <laughs> but don't be rough, Michal. Don't be rough. No, no. No pressure. Just think about my stomach. <laughs> Something like that, right? Uh, I can't hear it right now, but oh. I can feel it. I feel I feel death creeping. Death. Jesus, death. man. That's so I don't horrible. Know why do people have to eat so much? Uh, I'm hungry all the time. And I feel like I don't know, there's just something weird. <laughs> yeah. You don't eat for a few days and you just go mental. And you lose half of your body weight. Is that really so? Not half of your body weight. Okay. Well, actually, funnily enough, um, what I read somewhere is that most of the calories that you use go into digestion, which is kind of ironic because, you know, <laughs> that's the whole point. Like, that's what happens when you eat, you digest, and you actually sp you already waste, like, all most of the energy of yeah. what you ingested by digesting it again. So it's... Oh, it seems that Wojtek joined us. What's up? Hey, man. Ah, there he is. Hello, man. Sorry, guys. Sorry, I couldn't make it into the stream. Personal stuff. Sorry, sorry for that. I saw a little bit of a demo right now. I was just catching up with the session. What have you done, Michal? It's just crazy good. I love your approach, like how structured you are. And uh, yeah, thanks, man. It's uh, yeah, thanks a lot, man. Yeah, I, 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 and really, I thought you were using like three D like meshes before you really paint over it, but seeing you doing it from scratch is just mind-blowing. And, you know, you're super fast with that, you know? I, I thought yeah. it takes so much time to do it, yeah. like manually, like you're doing it right now. Yeah. But actually, like, hour and, yeah. hour and a half. Damn. Yeah, thanks. It's, um... I told you he's he crazy, man. <laughs> wow, yeah. I'm not that crazy, man. Come on, guys. You make me feel really humble and flattered. Thank you, really. It's, uh... It's really good to hear such big works, words from big guys, you know? You are, we we are massive amazing. guys. So big, so big. So we, are big. Also, we are big on Fusroda picture only. Yeah. <laughs> Did you show the new Fusroda picture, Derek? No, I'll show it to Is there a new Fusroda picture? Yeah. yeah. Derek did a little update. <laughs> Equipment. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Tools of trade. <laughs> All right, I have to catch up with that. Is it under like the ten thousand post? Yes. Okay. Uh, maybe Derek, you can just show it to everyone for a minute. Okay. <laughs> oh God. Can enjoy our beautiful physics. I hope and... it's not what I think it is. <laughs> I I just hope. I can see it. Let me, let, let me check it. Let me share it. Can you see it, guys? <laughs> yeah, so um, Derek's got a bottle of vodka, of course. <laughs> yes. I've of got a, course. a can of English beer, apparently. I've never seen a can that big, but okay. <laughs> uh, who cares about scale? For the record, I don't drink English beer. <laughs> and then Wojtek has... Like energy drink, right? Yeah, yeah. You, you just <laughs> you just toss it so time in. I the... just have it on my desk right now. Yeah. I just drunk. So. So this is an accurate represent. Yeah, yeah, it's relevant. So I'm the only one who's not accurately represented, then, except for the torso. <laughs> Lol. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I love Derek. How you still haven't fixed your face? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You were laying in the sun with a bag over your head. <laughs> yes. Usually people are the opposite. Their face breath, like hands and their body, you know, they wear a t-shirt and their body is white. But you're uh, like actually, the I think he was fighting terrorists. They put like a bag on his head and then he was like <laughs> escaping through like a desert for 40 days or something. Yeah, yeah exactly. So. Yeah. With the holes on my eyes only. Uh. <laughs> okay, go back to me, help. That's the best overpaint you did. <laughs> oh, some horses. 
What the, yeah. what the hell is that? I will show it in two minutes, maybe. Uh, actually, yeah. Yeah, because it's on, screen is on Michal right now. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, right now, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> so you actually are putting like a color variations on your sketch later on because I, I, I've seen you um, did like an overall value which was like a greenish kind of yeah, kind of a no. solid. And, yeah. yeah, and then you just apply like color variations later on. You, you are not doing it straight. No, not because I like just to uh, to fill it in with um, the whole sketch. I like to fill it in with uh, basic paint. Sometimes mm -hmm. it can be like even grayscale. You know, it doesn't matter. You can just color balance it out with sliders later on. But usually I like pick like a general color that will probably work, mm -hmm. and after that I will play with how the light works and how the environment affects the um, the overall um, the, the, the whole unit, the whole the whole hardware piece. Yeah, I can see you the whole plan. put like a, a little bit more grayish uh, green uh, as a reflection of the sky, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. And that, that stands just for reflection of the sky. It's really cool. It's really simple, but it really sets the yeah, it really the whole model yeah, inside. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, so Elin van Essen asks, um, if you're at a beginner's level of concept art, what's good to try first? I'm already watching a lot of tutorials, but my level and skills don't seem to get any higher. Well, you don't get better from watching tutorials. Tutorials. There you go. Stop watching, start doing. Exactly. <laughs> you have to. No, it's it, it's it's uh, it's true what he says yeah, because there's theory and there's practice, but. In the end, uh, you making art is the practice part, not the theory part. So if you're only watching tutorials, I mean, watching tutorials is great, but I feel like a lot of people end up getting too focused on, you know, watching other people and, and you know, learning it. instead of just applying it, just doing it. So just start painting. Yeah. And there's not a, there's not a particular thing that you have to start with first. It doesn't really matter. Um, I think if you want the quickest learning curve, you should follow maybe like a schedule or something, like the one that Boytek put up in episode three, am I right? Or two, somewhere there yeah, the yeah. episodes? Yeah, yeah, three, I'm not sure. I can post, uh, post the schedule like, and, uh, into the event. So. Yeah, it's, sorry? What did you say? I will post the, uh, I will, I will repost the schedule into the event. Okay. So just go to Facebook, I will post it in a minute. Just yeah, so... It's just a template that you can follow. You don't have to follow it exactly, but, you know, where you can sort of say, like, okay, I'm going to do study now, I'm going to do uh, sketching now, I'm going to do this now, this now, this now. So just try a bit of everything, um, you know. Every hour that you put into it, even if whatever you draw sucks, it doesn't matter. Like, <laughs> it's still helping you get there. You have to go through all these hours, you know, and you're never losing. If you're painting, you're not losing. Even if you think what you look make looks total shit, you're actually getting better because you look at it and you realize that it's shit. And you look at something else, you're like, hmm, okay, why is this shit and that person's work's not? Well, that's how you learn. You see the difference. That's why we're doing overpaints so that you can look at our version and your version and see what, you know, is maybe better in ours or maybe better in yours. And you can learn from that. Yeah. Exactly, the mileage, right? Just paint your way through. Uh, that's the argument I was like talking in my head to myself when I was in doubt or something. I was just telling myself, hey, you're painting. It's okay. Even though it looks like shit, I mean, one more painting and it will be you're better. You're still doing it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, okay, I have a question about uh, how do you, Michal, how do you work with line work? Um, so you have the sketch underneath, or are you painting? You are painting on top of that, right? Uh, right now, the painting already on top of it. Yeah. Okay, so you are, you are just overpainting your lines. Right. That's right. Yeah. Leaving it uh, where where you want it, or are you are you coming back to the sketch underneath and just delete it where, where you don't want it, or are you just overpaint it? I'm overpainted, or I might even later on um, 
make its opacity a little bit softer, so you won't see the line art anymore. It's um, yes. The more I render it, the less you you will see. The, the less I'll be needing the line art, you know, because I make mm -hmm. like everything is like now. I'm getting to a point where everything will be like valued out. So everything will be color, so I won't be needing the line art to hold the piece together. So, uh, I hope it makes sense. And uh, yeah, right. but I use line art pure for design purposes. So uh, yeah, I'm it's doing easier these. to design and line it down. Um, when I'm using these, uh, the, the the line drawing becomes only a guide of what the design is, because now my focus is on how lighting should act. So, so you are trying to break up your process into like manageable pieces like okay right now I'm designing with line uh, or just roughing in a basic silhouette or form then you're doing a detailed sketch on top then you're then you apply like a silhouette then you like paint on top. Yeah it really depends yeah. Zero. Yeah like right like, like now I'm did like something that I uh, that I've been doing uh, for for a lot of years. Uh, this has nothing to do with 3D. I just started on a canvas, and I had like only a perspective grid I set up earlier, which I'm using also for other pieces. And on that grid, I just started to come up with shapes for uh, for the design. You know. So I've seen you to you you have so much fluency and and. It's like a little bit um, unconscious, I think. That you are just when you were sketching ellipses, you were just placing them perfectly in the perspective. Like you, you knew how they converge, and that three-point perspective, which is a little bit trickier, you know, yeah. to 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 go with. But it looks great because uh, it's lo it looks just more dramatic and uh, yeah. So where exactly do you have that? From is it just mileage, or you, you have used to work with that kind of perspective grid, so you know how the specific elements behave? Um, I think perspective is perspective, and I and I think what you mean is then why I have this control with my lines, or is it? Uh, what's no, I just mean like uh, you don't really have to go in and. Um, like with an ellipse tool or anything like that to establish your, oh, your no. Uh, curves No, that and would stuff. take too much time to play with a lot of tools. I'm really trying to avoid tools. I, I should use them. I know that, mm -hmm. and I'm aware of it. But I just just give me just a brush and a canvas and just start design stuff. So it comes yeah. down to fundamentals again, I guess. And yeah. And what, yeah, what I was, was just about to ask covered. that. Yeah. So it's all about fundamentals. and. Uh, as far as for the tools that I sometimes use, yeah, I, I use a lot of tools uh, also for my line drawings. When I want the line drawing to be even more clear, I will use uh, ellipses and circles because my circles are not perfect. So, um, yeah. But here I like made rough circles and it kind of works, you know. So, uh, yeah. So fifth C asked, but we've actually answered this earlier in the section. How do you draw such straight parallel lines on a tablet? I can't control it well without the tactile response of paper and pencil. Is it just muscle training? Yes, it's muscle training. Yeah, it's coordination training. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, just and the tip. Yeah. Just. No, uh, sorry, oh, so, yes. no, sorry. You were talking. <laughs> no, no. You yes. You talk first, and uh, then I will say my. It's I can because my screen is on, right? Yep. Can do like a very fast demo. Just open a line of Photoshop, a file in Photoshop. Um, whoever asked the question, and also for everybody, for everybody, for anybody else who's interested in it. Um, line art is something very cool and effective to have. I think it's it's just drawing. That's it. You know, it's just a drawing skill. And on a tablet, it's of course different. So just open a file and start like putting straight lines. You know, and do it out of your elbow. Try to keep your wrist a little bit stiff, and try to make the lines out of your elbow. So you'll get pretty um, 
uh, straighter lines of that, you know. So. Yeah, that was the tip that I was gonna, um, you know, yeah. stress on again is that if you use your if you use your wrist to draw a line, yeah. um, you know, if you look at your hand right now and you you turn your wrist, you do a curl, you see that you're actually your yeah. hand is making an arch motion, not a straight motion. So, like, how do you expect to draw a proper straight line when your hand moves in an arch? It's quite hard, actually, if you think about it. If you use your arm or, like, your elbow, like uh, Mikko says, you can move your elbow and your hand will go in a straight line. It's very easy. And because yeah. you're using a bigger uh, part of your body, you've actually got much more control over, you know, what you're yeah. doing. Um, so it, it really comes down to using the right body part and it's also fluency you know you want to be confident when you do something try making a line fast and not slow because then you'll be shaky um, yeah, try doing exactly. it fast in like a confident and controlled um, motion like a lighting strike exactly do like it a light lightning strike you mean yeah. <laughs> lightning strike lightning light Go to hell with that well. <laughs> Sorry, man. <laughs> no, it's good, man. Go to hell. Go to hell. <laughs> I hate you. We weren't talking about you, man. We're like the, 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 I just lightning. heard like lightning, lightning. I just from from you, and so just. For what it doesn't matter, you know. <laughs> uh. Okay, guys. So the art practice schedule is are already up and. the. Uh, and uh, even on the even page cool. on Facebook. Thanks. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, I can. I would like to share my screen right now. Mm. On the word by Pierre Demet. Pierre Demet. I don't know how to call. Uh, I really like that picture, and overall feeling in the climate and. The buildings he, he just drew, but the perspective on the horse and the composition looks a bit off. And there are some issues that people were mentioned me mentioned on the chat about putting the curves and the, the final shapes into the corners of of the canvas, and they are pretty touched the canvas board in here. So I wanted to add a bit more space. Uh, on top of the picture and redraw the horse and the rider. So I had this one and I just added a bit more sky into it to just give a more space and more brief into the picture. I really like the lighting effects on it so I, I just left it uh, and to make some corrections with, with the colors uh, to make a bit more sunny day. A bit more direct. Uh, what? A bit more Derek. <laughs> yeah. I love and your bullets, man. They're so nice always. Thanks, man. I, I really like the previous one too, but it was yeah. like a bit uh, too subdued and uh, desaturated for me. So I wanted to beat it up a bit and to draw the pose, pose of the horse and the rider. I, find, I found some reference for it, uh, but, the, but the lighting effects were from the opposite side so I, I made them on my own mm -hmm. and as as we as we've been talking with Jonas it's about the understanding the muscle work and uh, the shape work on the body so you can easily arrange your own light on the on the character still using some reference for the pose and for the overall anatomy and make some more you know the foggy style in in the background some some separation on the planes in it but I think it's pretty done right now. I don't like the characters yet, uh, the rider, uh, but I think it can be a bit uh, fixed yet. So I will try to do it in a minute or so. But I think <clears throat> the most critical thing on this one was just putting the character and the horse more in the foreground to give you know, more immersion into the picture because this one shows me the very awkward position of the horse and the perspective shot on the horse which you know it wasn't exact on the same like like overall background was so I made it more balanced and clean right now and I think it's it's is the 
a bit better way to, to depict that kind of picture. But I really like your picture, Pierre. So keep up the good work and post more stuff. Yeah, that's my point on this one. Okay, thank you. Okay, so go back to Michal. Cool. <clears throat> yeah, so here I'm like uh, fleshing it out a little bit more. So. Uh... You have already so rendered picture, man. In some parts there is a lot of rendering already, so we are pretty fast. Yeah, it's like I try to do some hand painted rust as well instead of use photos because I'm like too late to make a photo. Just render like a little bitch. Yes. Is there any tips that you can give about rendering metal? I think a lot of people have trouble with that, even though actually I think metal is one of the easiest. I think so too, yeah. I think skin is the hardest, man. Yeah, soft stuff, right? Like yeah. matte stuff is hard. Yeah, the the rules of light apply very simple on metal, I think. Yeah. Yeah, and I feel like when you play with things like reflection and specularity, you can hide your mistakes a lot easier. Um, if you look at video games, like you know any type of real time graphics, any surface that has reflection or specularity will tend to look a lot more realistic because it's a lot easier to pull off in a way. If you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, you know, like you, know, you, like could, you could see it. If, I don't know if you remember, and I'm sorry if you're interrupting you. But do you remember when like Bloom was overused by a lot of games, and then the high pitch lighting was like overused in a lot of games? I hate Bloom. It looks so bad. Yeah, <laughs> I think they used it because it was like a cheap, effective way to make stuff yeah. look cool and look yeah. shiny and shit. You know. Yeah, it was cool in Fable because it fits with the universe. Oh yeah, yeah. But Generally, there's not that much bloom in the real world. I mean, yeah. you can, no. but you need a lot no, of. Oh, you get high, you have bloom. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> or you don't have to get high. Um, if you wear glasses and you go from like a warm to cold environment and they sort of damp, <clears> you know, then you see a nice little bloom as well. Yeah. So yeah, if you want to go to bloomy world, do that. Do it. <clears throat> Some questions maybe from the chat. Does Michal design buildings as well as vehicles? Uh, yeah, check out my portfolio. I should have some buildings. Yeah. Yeah, there's some a lot of there's some red environment and design, so you should find it. So go to the michalkus.cghub.com or write in, in the Facebook Michalkus and you find his works. Go and follow him. Is Wojtek still there? I think I he's know. dead. He probably gone him. somewhere. I'm here. Oh, he's Thank I'm God here. he's back. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Espen. Hi. Hello. Who are you talking to? I'm talking to Espen. Where is he? In the chat, in oh. caps. Okay, Mr. Caps, Caps Espen. Okay. <laughs> That's a good nickname, Caps Espen. Oh no, now people are copying him. Everyone's going to start writing in caps. You know, the funny thing is when you post a comment in caps on Facebook, I don't know if this with other people, but it just automatically gets <laughs> flagged as spam. So sometimes when I have comments from Aspen, I have to unhide them because they're just flagged already from the get-go. Because <laughs> it's like all caps. Or if you use like 10 exclamation marks, Facebook just flags it as spam automatically. <laughs> okay, so another question is, getting in the film industry as a matte painter different than making it as a concept artist? Do they really overlap? Um, from my personal experience, yes. It's they're, In film, they're two totally different um, jobs. I have um, I've worked on uh, six films now, and I have never been asked to do a matte painting. But at the moment, I'm working in commercials at MPC, 
And actually there, concept artist and matte painter does overlap. So I guess it kind of depends where you work. Um, I think if you're a concept artist who does more for the real stuff, uh, very highly detailed, then you know you're likely to get some you know more matte painterly type of stuff. But generally in film, they're different because the departments are different. So when you're working on a big film production, the DMP department is the one who deals with all the matte paintings, and then the art department is the one who deals with the concepts. And generally, you won't have concept artists in one or matte painters in the other. Um, that being said, you don't have to stick to one thing. There are a lot of people who can do both of them. Um, Levy, for example, um, Levy Perfi is um, a great matte painter, but he also does speed paints, super rough. So, you know, I mean, you, you can do both. And if you put both in your portfolio, you might end up doing both for a living. It's really up to you. Um, but generally, um, if you're working in film, you'll be in a different department when you're doing matte paintings. And you won't work in the studio. That's, that's maybe something important. If you're a matte painter, you're probably never going to be in the film studio because the matte painting doesn't happen during production. It only happens in post. While concept artists are needed throughout the entire production. There's pitch work, there's pre-production work, there's production work, and there's post-production uh, concept work. So if you want to be part of the entire pipeline, you're better off becoming a concept artist. But Matt painters make a shitload of money. I learned that. Sometimes you can get like five grand for a single matte painting, which is pretty good. So, Shit. No choice. Sell out or no sell out. <laughs> so rendering out the forms and building up the details is uh, the most time-consuming part of the whole process, right? It is. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, it is. Um, especially when I'm using this technique, which I really wanted to show. Um, yeah, I'm rendering everything actually by hand. Um, if I would be like more in a hurry or something, I would like throw in photo textures. But um, yeah, since I like to uh, show my old school technique and it was not showed before, let's just stick to the hand painted stuff. Um, yeah, and I hope you guys are enjoying it. Uh, Might be a little amazing, bit boring man. because yeah. No, it's, no, 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 it's it's cool. It's, uh, it's really amazing. I mean. Um, so, is it like the most relaxing part of the whole process? Like you have the design figure out. Like yeah, like the um, the stress level of the design itself is like over. You know, it's like of course I could do another variation, and I'm still not happy with some design choices. Um, but but still, you know, design is done, and I wanted to move forward. And from that point, my brain as a designer kind of turns off. And then the brain of like kind of an illustrator, brain. artsy type, turns on a little bit to uh, to pop this design out in a nice lighting condition. Mm -hmm. I hope uh, I hope it makes sense. I hope, well, do people understand me what I'm talking about? <laughs> yeah, it makes perfect sense. So yeah. So it looks like a very slow, a bit technique, but you are doing it pretty fast. It looks slow. Uh, yeah, it, it looks it, like you know someone who is, would be doing it very slowly, but you are doing it like you know, like a wilt. Yeah, it's something. I I think with time you just become faster. I think, um, mm -hmm. and not it's not super tight. I mean, if you zoom in, you can see like you know, it's pretty, it's still pretty rough. I don't know for how long I've been doing it now. Uh, almost, two hours. almost two hours, yeah. Almost two hours, yes. Um, I don't know if you, uh, if guys ask ask you that, but you can guys correct me. Yeah. Uh, so what about your traditional background? Do you have it? To have you drawn with pencil? Have you guys asked that question? Uh, we've talked a little bit about his industrial design background. Yeah, and his draw pencil drawing. Oh, okay. drawing. Yeah. So, but what about the uh, visual library? Have you also talked about that? Uh, yeah, actually, we did talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> yep, yep. I'm sorry, man. <laughs> covered everything without you. <laughs> we covered everything. Yeah, we'll try not to be late next time. 
Bam! There we go again. <laughs> yeah, that's my head against hitting against the wall. <laughs> <laughs> you thought your head was full with brains, but no, no, beak and empty head. That's the sound of a pretty shallow head. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> beak and empty. <laughs> Oh, guys, and please subscribe. Like, just hit that button. Right? All right, Frank, man. Them now. And right. don't forget to follow the Mika works. Yeah. Oh, thanks, okay. guys. I forgot about my advert advertising part. Like, just <laughs> go follow us. Go follow us. Go subscribe. Um, it looks like your approach is really similar to Scott Robertson's. I mean, I, I have watched his tutorials, and um, I was trying to get fluent perspective like three years ago or so. Yeah. Uh, I love using that guy. His, yeah. yeah. Nice. Great, great. He's so chill when he explains stuff. It's really nice to listen to him talk. Yeah, it's like a high all the time, you know? Making yeah, lines. like a mellow high. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, he's based. Where is he based? San Francisco or? Yeah, I think San Francisco. Yeah, they have a, they have a lot of weed down there, don't they? In Holland as well, man. Oh yeah. Wat vertel me, dikke toeter op steek, man. Of niet, dan jongen. Dikke toeter op steek, Yeah, man. Uh, yeah, if you that shit in front of police officer, nothing will happen. <laughs> <laughs> Should probably. Now, that's what I call freedom, you know. Yeah. But see, the problem if you promote that, then people from other countries come and they act like idiots, and then the laws change. And yeah, it's like and they like abuse it, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Chill down, man. <laughs> Use it. Don't abuse yeah. it. <laughs> but I can't understand them, you know. They really like it, and they come to Holland. I like Holland because they're very open-minded. I mean, like you know, since since Belgium and, and the Netherlands, or, or you know, Flanders and the Netherlands have shared the same language, obviously we we look at each other a lot of times. But I think the Belgians can learn a lot from, from the Dutch people because, I don't know, the Netherlands is such an open-minded and sort of tolerant country, which is really amazing. Um, you know, like, things like talking openly about um, very private stuff like, like sexuality or something like that is very common in the Netherlands. You would never see that in, in the States at the same... I mean, I think Belgium's sort of catching up. Like, we're pretty open-minded as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, for example, like I was, I was talking to to a friend, uh, an American friend, and I was telling him about the show that I, I watched in Belgium like years ago, and and basically it was like a show with uh, guests, and they had to they had to guess from a, a small crop of a picture what they were looking at, and the the theme was famous nip slips, and it was just like images of American celebrities that had like nip slips or some sort of slip <laughs> and then they had to guess like this you would never see this in the states you know like nudity on TV just on a quiz show like no way that's way <laughs> out of line <laughs> but here you know in Europe we don't really care about that much of stuff that's that's what I really love about about Europe in general like we're, we're really laid back we're not not too worried about being politically correct all the time you know yeah just it's chill cool. down yeah just even chill. though we're like a royal kingdom you know <laughs> Yeah, that's a bit retarded, though. Why do we still yeah, it king? It is. Although our king stepped down, which is quite brave. I don't think that's ever happened, actually. I'm not but sure. Now, so what happens now? Uh, no, his son took over. I think it was last year, but the king stepped uh, down. Like usually, you can like you die a king, basically. But um, yeah. Yeah, Beatrix also stepped down, the Dutch queen. That crazy chick. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I guess you you guys were first again. Damn it. <laughs> uh, okay, but we're getting off topic here. Um, I think we're gonna wrap up soon. By the way. Yeah. Yeah. More than two hours already, so maybe. Oh shit. Michael will post his his work and 
I don't know if he wants to work on it a bit more. Of course, you know, man. actually, I love it the way it is right now because it really shows how yeah. you approach stuff. You, you don't even have to delete the sketch from from underneath. You know, it's it looks really cool. You can see the whole process in one image, which is amazing. Yeah. Yeah, so maybe let's post that, uh, Michal, let's post on the event page that picture, and after you do some more work on it, you can also po post it afterward. Yeah, sure, man, of course. Yeah, that's amazing. Okay, so I think we should, uh, we will be ending right now. And yeah. people are still asking for some resources link and all the stuff, and I can tell you that we will have all the things on our Level Up website. <laughs> It's like routine yeah. every week. We are yeah. just, uh, just waiting. Yeah, we are trying to get it done finally, but it's you know that's the last touch, last touches on it. And we... Darn a sound as an excuse. I think Wojtek, because you were not here today, you can finish <laughs> it in like the next hour. <laughs> okay, I will. I will. Get some work um, and do the website. But. Uh, we've been posting the books uh, that that we have mentioned, and um, yes. Mikal will, will send us the ones that we talked about earlier that he thinks are good, the uh, tank ones and stuff. So we'll post that, and maybe I want to, um, since we're talking about World War Two and post-war kind of stuff, I have a book that I want to share with everyone that I think is very cool. Um, mm -hmm. I saw it the first time when I was working at Studio Babelsberg in in Berlin. And I saw it again at Warner Brothers, and I saw it. I saw it again at MPC this week. So, like, this is a book that really goes around in the industry, um, and it's an architecture book about, um, I guess, sort of modernism or postmodernism. You would call it. It's quite broad because there's like many different architectural styles, but it's basically like Russian architecture from the Cold War period, like post World War II until I don't know, like. 20 years ago or something, maybe even up until the 90s. And the book is called, I think it's called CCCP, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, no, okay, yeah, well, that's just that just gets me to the Soviet Union, obviously. Um, let me just look it up quickly. Yeah, okay, so CCCP, Cosmic Communist Constructions Photographed. That's the name of the book. And the front has like this beach with a hotel and there's just crazy crazy architecture in that book that's really inspiring for like sci-fi buildings and sci-fi cities there's just some of these structures are just really amazing like you, you'll go into research and you'll find so much cool stuff mm -hmm. um, that you can use as a reference so yeah check it out CCCP um, if you just type CCCP book you'll find it and then, um, oh, let me just post the Amazon link, maybe, if I can find it. So maybe post everything that we've been discussing today on the Level Up group. Yeah, yeah, we'll just do that. We'll just do that. Okay. Yeah, I think so. Thank you very much, Michal, for your amazing demo. It was, you know, something different that we usually do on the Level Up, and I hope that people will enjoy it. And we enjoyed it a lot, so thank you, man. Yeah, I hope also because... people enjoyed it. And, of course, thank you to all guys. Yeah, uh, thank you for series. coming. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, as a, yeah, go ahead. I hope yeah, okay, you guys so... will uh, continue with it with even, more awesome, uh, with even more awesome stuff because I'm really enjoying it. And it's a really good thing that uh, you guys sharing a lot, doing these overpaying these sessions all for free. Because yeah, Thanks, schools are Thanks, good. Man. Schools are really expensive, so it's a really good thing. This, this they are. They are. So, yeah. yeah, we're helping the poor student out there. Right. <laughs> so they can feed themselves. Oh man, I'm so hungry. Let's end the session. <laughs> okay, get out, man. <laughs> 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 okay, so thanks uh, also, Jonas, for overpainting. And... Yeah, thanks, everyone. And we'll see yeah. you guys next week with see a new guest. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.